Welcome back to the Paddle and Thin Podcast Network. We're brought to you by Yak Gadget. For all your fine quality kayak fishing needs, go to yakgadget.com. Pelican cases, coolers, and lighters, go to pelican.com. And the 153 Bay Company. For all your hard, soft plastic bait needs, go to the 153anglers.com. Now let's talk about some awesome products. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the final cast. I'm one of your hosts, Josh. I'm Brad. How's it going, Brad? Good. How you doing? Good, good, good. Good, man. Good stuff. Yeah, I saw you were killing it on the small mouth this weekend, buddy. <laughs> Always. I love right. it. It's fun. Were you upset you didn't do the tournament? No. I, was, <laughs> I, I, I told Justin, I was like, yeah, even if I would have done it, I, I wouldn't have placed in the money, so it's all good. So it's whatever. Yeah. Well, tonight we have an exciting episode. Brad and I have been wanting to do an episode about sunglasses for quite some time. And uh, we put out some feelers a couple months ago in regards to, you know, learning more about sunglasses in general and how, you know, it can help, you know, improve your fishing game. So uh, Brian actually put us in connection with our guest tonight um, at ICAST. So welcome, Al Perkinson, and Al is with Bahio Sunglasses, and Al, how are you doing, buddy? Doing great, man. How are you guys doing? Good. Doing great, man. Doing great. Doing good. Um, but yeah, man, like I said before, we were talking uh, right before we started here that Brad and I were super excited about doing this uh, episode. So let's get started. Give us a little bit of history about yourself and the company and how you guys got started. Yeah, sounds great. We, um, you know, I, I've been in the sunglass business for a while. I started with uh, another brand, Costa Sunglasses, back in 2000. And uh, when it was a tiny little brand in Florida and grew that brand to about $160 million. Uh, till 2017. And uh, at that point, uh, we were acquired by a large French company. I decided that, uh, you know, we built the brand on fishing and uh, the French didn't really get into fishing that much. So decided to leave and, and left and went out to Montana and worked for uh, Sims out there, fly fishing company. And um, then made my way back to the East Coast and uh, saw an opportunity to pull the band back together and start a new brand. And so that's what we did with Bahio. And uh, again, it's, uh, f you know, our passion is fishing. And mm -hmm. my wife and I have a couple of paddle kayaks that we love to, to pedal around on and, and fly fish off of. And, um, you know, we travel all over and fly fish. And uh, so, you know, we thought we'd uh, create a new brand that was geared towards fishing and, you know, really took lens technology and some other features to the next level and um, started, hey, we've just been in the market like four days, four, uh, four days, feels like four years, but it's been four months. <laughs> and uh, so we're, we're doing um, off to a great start and uh, having a great time. Awesome, man. So you're into kayaking, huh? I am, man. We were, we lived in Charleston for a little while and you've got all those marshes and creeks, mm -hmm. all the low country. And man, we, we would wheel our kayaks uh, down to the river and put in like a couple times a week and just mm -hmm. paddle around. And I mean, you're, you're so like close to the water and it's so quiet and you just feel kind of like part of nature out there, like super connected. Mm -hmm. And then we could stand up on them and cast and tail and reds out in the marsh. It was pretty sweet. Love awesome. it. What boats are you guys using? Uh, we've got a couple of Hobies. Um, nice. And yeah, they're not they're not like the super big ones. Uh, some mm -hmm. of those things are like, you know, you could get three or four people on them and run around and have a party. But uh, <laughs> these are just, you know, pretty modest. Uh, I can't remember the model name of them, but um, they're great. And they've got so many accessories for these things yeah. that, you know, buckets and mm -hmm. uh, rod holders and all this stuff, you know, place to put your cooler that um, 
they're really tricked out. They've come a long way over the last 10 years or so, for sure. Yeah, they have. That's for sure. So what's your experience been fly fishing from the kayak platform so far? Um, <clears throat> well, it's, you know, handling your line is always a challenge. And, mm -hmm. you know, so there's certain things on the kayak that your line tends to get caught on. So you just like have to throw a towel over it or pull up the pedals and stick them in the back, you know, so that, so that it doesn't get tangled up mm -hmm. too badly. Um, and then, you know, balance is always a yeah. challenge. Uh, but, but ours are pretty stable. And, um, and so that hadn't been that big of a deal, but uh, I don't know. It's, it's really been pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. awesome, man. Go ahead, Brad. I know a lot of people that do, uh, fish fly fish off of kayaks and stuff. I always thought like a paddleboard type kayak would, you know, would be a lot better to fish off of, but I always wondered about that. The line getting caught on stuff. Yeah. We've got a couple of paddle boards as well. You know, our garage is bigger than our house at this point. Um, <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, I mean the paddle boards, definitely the line management is not that bad cause it's like super mm -hmm. smooth and there's nothing to get caught on. Um, but you know, you, with the pedals, it's great because you can, you can pedal and still have use of your hands and arms, you know, for, yeah. for, for doing whatever we're on the paddle board. Like, where do you put the paddle? You know, when you go to go to cast and, um, I, again, ours are pretty simple. They make some super tricked out ones that have places for everything and leaning bars and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, 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 get a couple that's, that's cool. yeah but it's all good. Love it all, man. Yeah. Well, let's get into talking sunglasses, man. Um, so you started out with uh, Costa and you guys, you know, parted ways or you parted ways from them. Um, uh, what was your experience like, you know, starting out doing that? Were you somebody who's just started in the company, like like down at the bottom and you worked your way up or did you help start that company? Was there like the idea for being fishing specific there with Costa? Yeah, actually I was with an, an ad agency at the time and I got Costa as a client and hmm. it was just this cool little, you know, Florida brand that started out in fishing. Hmm. Well, they, they kind of did a, several different things at the beginning uh, they initially were going to be a race car brand because they were right there in Daytona Beach, mm -hmm. Florida. And uh, they had some connections into the racing world. But then for whatever reason, anglers started uh, using them and they started going around to boat shows and selling those at boat shows. And uh, so I came in as head of marketing and one on the executive team. So I kind of came in at the top versus the bottom. Uh, but it was it was really small at the time, and you know we didn't didn't have a lot of money to do marketing with. So, um, you know, we just kind of made it up as we went along, and uh, ev eventually we just figured out that fishing was where we needed to focus at the time. And so um, it was it was all pretty new at that point. You know, there there are a lot of sort of fishing sunglass brands out there now, but back then, Costa was kind of the only game in town. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, we, we just sort of learned a lot about the fishing market, everybody at the company fished. So that was kind of cool. And, um, you know, grew it and developed some, you know, some pretty cool technologies on the sunglass side and uh, some, you know, some cool products that were really sort of built for fishing. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what the company was built on, you know, that, that foundation of fishing and it grew, beyond that, you know, to more like a coastal lifestyle. And then, you know, when the Europeans took it over, they, they really were more interested in the lifestyle than they were in, in, in the beach and that kind of thing, than they were in the fishing part of it. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's where we come along now with Bahio and really saying, Hey, we're, we're purely about fishing yeah. and uh, you know, we're going to continue to advance the technologies and the designs for fishing uh, with this brand. That's a great thing because you see that happen too often where a bigger corporation takes over some, a bunch of smaller things and kind of starts to control it in a way. Cause I mean, I, 
I was never familiar with costa until I became an angler. You know, I mean, I've I've worn Oakley glass sunglasses forever. You know, um, mm -hmm. and then you know, as I got more involved in the fishing, you know, everybody's like, you try, you got to try out, you know, costas, and <clears throat> never pulled the trigger on them just because I'm one of the few people that's sort of um, good with their sunglasses. I don't lose them. So <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I've, had the same, I've had the same two pairs of sunglasses and it's the same model, except my first pair was non-polarized and my second pair was, and I've had them literally at this point for 12 years. Wow. The one current ones I have, I've had for five <laughs> five of those years so i don't know how <laughs> how i'm responsible with my sunglasses because i know some people are uh, like, yeah. buying them once a year at least you know oh yeah dude i was about to say i've gone through probably 10 pairs in that time frame you've gone really? through one yeah <laughs> <laughs> well i guess it comes down when i spend money on something i get real particular about oh it. yeah so, <laughs> the first pair Not wasn't deep. Yeah, the first pair wasn't that earth shattering. They were non polarized. They were like seventy bucks. But mm -hmm. this next pair, I was like, mm, I'm gonna try to take care of them. But I just replaced the lenses on them not too long ago. But so with Bahio, you guys, I I love it. I love the fact that you stepped up and you're like, you know what? They're gonna do this with the brand that I was working with. Let's just go start our own and stay on track with the fishing thing. Because I mean, Costa, you look at Costa. It's it was. It was anglers, you know, like I didn't hear many other people besides fishermen that were wearing those sunglasses. So definitely it's it's awesome to see you, you know, be like, you know what, um, let's go ahead and start this on our own and let's take, you know, take the reins. Um, and you said how long you guys have been at it so far? Yeah, just just about four months. Four so months. We're, we're newbies, newbies on the block and. It's been fun to get go back to being small and yeah. uh, have a lot of freedom and just a lot of camaraderie, great group of, of mm -hmm. folks. And, uh, <clears throat> and I think, you know, a lot of consumers out there and, you know, a lot of retailers, especially, uh, they like to know who they're doing business with. You know, they mm -hmm. like to do business with a small company and the small company's got to deliver on the quality of product and stuff. But you know, you like to be able to pick up the phone and call somebody and a real person answers mm -hmm. and they can actually be knowledgeable and help you with your issues. And they kind of treat you more like a person than just a customer. Right. And uh, we're finding everybody is so uh, excited about that aspect of it, you know, just having an, another, uh, you know, sort of privately held small company to do business with. And so mm -hmm. service is at the top of the list for Bahio. Uh, you know, somebody calls, we answer the phone. I mean, the, the customer service is 20 feet away from me and I'm the CEO. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're super plugged in. If anybody has any issues, any problems, we're on it. We take care of them. And, you know, just like you would if, if they were your personal friend, you know? Yeah. That, that's the kind of company that I like to uh, purchase from. To, so to relate myself to that, I, I work with like a smaller rod company and they're, they're similar in that way where they're easy to reach. They're easy to talk to and get information from whenever I want. And, yeah. and that's important to me. I, I know for sure it'll be important to many other people out there as well. Yeah, I mean, in today's day and age, you always see these big companies buying up the smaller companies. Um, and, you know, Cust is a, a definitely an example of that. Like, um, it's Luxottica, right, that owns them and like 20 other brands of sunglasses. Like, mm -hmm. so when you're calling in there, you're calling into somebody's like, okay, well, we're, what are we, what sunglass brand are we dealing with? And, yeah. and then by then you're trying to talk to somebody who's trying to cover basis on 20 different brands and may have nothing, of, you know, in regards to fishing knowledge at all or mm -hmm. whatever, whatever brand they might be calling them about. So I think a lot of times, you know, when, when companies go that route, they're losing a lot of the important things that people are, are looking forward to. And that's mm -hmm. that personal communication that who I'm talking to truly cares about 
what issues I'm having and what they can do to, uh, you know, correct it instead of just being like, okay, yeah, we, we can or can't, you know, honor your warranty or, or mm -hmm. whatever, you know, there's, you know, it's kind of cookie. I mean, I worked at customer service and I know how that works and we had, you know, scripts we followed. And when you start getting in that script, you yourself become that robot that everybody dreads trying to get through the phone tree, you know? So, um, I definitely respect you guys for taking the step, you know, in that direction to make the customer's priority because once you do that and you gain their trust, you know, you usually gain a lifetime, you know, customer. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we've all had those terrible customer service experiences, right? <laughs> and, yeah. yep. I mean, you're just on hold for days and you get transferred to 12 different people. And, um, you know, when, when you have the power or the ability to say ours is not going to be like that, it's, it comes from the heart, man. It's like, mm -hmm. I don't want to inflict that on somebody else. You know, we, we want to really take care of people. And, uh, so yeah, I think it's just, it's almost like a virus that's, attacked American business over the years. It didn't used to be like that, but now all that mergers and acquisitions and combining mm -hmm. things. And just like you said, the, you know, the call center is, uh, you know, those people are paid to get off the phone as fast as they can and cost mm -hmm. the company as little money as they can. I like, I like the guy at Zappos who started Zappos and they gave an award for the longest conversation to their customer service people. <laughs> And they hired people for customer service who just love to talk to people, you know, yeah. not like chitty chatty talk, productive talk, but they, that's what they enjoy doing. And they said, look, make a friend, you know, talk to this person as long as you need to, to take care of them. And uh, their customer service scores are just through the roof because hmm. of that. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've worked for a call center and we'd have our manager sit down and listen to the conversation and grade it. And I was always bad for talking too long. And it's just because I'm, <laughs> I'm the same way, man, because I, I want, like, I'm really good about wanting to make sure that it's like one call and done. You know, I don't want that person to have to keep calling in over and over and over again. So, you know, I, I would get marked all the time for, I had great quality scores, just awful number, you know, Mm -hmm. length of time and i'm like hey you can hit me on that every time and i'll take it as long as i've got good quality scores that's the only thing i cared about um, yep. that lifestyle also can drive you crazy so i'm glad i got <laughs> yeah. away from that job yeah. it was so depressing like you come home and you're like oh because nobody really calls you when you're doing well you know what yeah, I mean? like, yeah 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 doing good it's always like hey i have a problem and you know in the sector that i worked in was super depressing so yeah but um, let's talk sunglasses now, man. Um, cool. I want to know what is your favorite thing about your company's product so far that you guys have come come up with? I'll give you a real specific answer, and it's our pink lens. Mm, we have awesome. we have a pink lens that we developed, and it just kind of came out to be pink. We didn't start to make it pink, but in order for it to perform the way it had to. It kind of came out pink and we uh, were like, well, our big burly fishing dudes going to wear a pink lens. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know. I don't think they will, but this is a, the best lens we can make. It's amazing. And uh, so what we found was people loved it and they started freaking out about it. And we were sold out of it in like five minutes. Ooh, wow. And uh, so we had to order a bunch more. And I'm pretty sure we got them in stock at this point, but it it's been a big surprise and actually, you know, sort of pointed us in the right direction on developing some new stuff that um, is pretty interesting. So that's the pink lens has been a lot of fun. Are, are these the ones on the screen right now? Yep. That's okay. it. What, what makes those so special exactly? Well, there's, I mean, there's a couple of things. Um, the a lens is made of a lot of different layers. We call it the stack. Mm -hmm. And so each layer has a different impact on how you see, and they have, a lot of them have different colors. And so when you combine all of those together, 
you get an effect and you don't really know what that effect is going to be mm -hmm. until you combine them all together. But one of the layers is called the base lens layer. So it's just sort of your basic starting point for a lens. And most brands will use a gray base or maybe a brown base, sometimes a copper base. Mm -hmm. We used a red base with this, not like bright red, but definitely reddish mm -hmm. brown has a lot of red in it. And um, then once we combine that with, with a, a pink mirror and then a certain type of polarized film and certain type of coatings, uh, then that created this effect um, that is allows you to see fish really deep in the water. We do a ton of sight fishing. And mm -hmm. so if I'm out on a flat fishing, you know, I, I trade out lenses, I test lenses to see which one is going to not only knock down the glare, but it's going to allow me because of the, the stack to see deeply into the water. Cause the more I can see into the water, the more fish I can see against the bottom. Mm -hmm. So this, this lens is a super high contrast lens that allows you to see fish. I don't know how many feet farther I would say, I don't know. It's hard to tell, but I would say maybe 10 or 20 feet farther into mm -hmm. the water, you can see wow. fish. And, um, when we, we've been taking this around all over the Caribbean and in the United States and letting guides who are out on the water, you know, all day long, every day, and their eyes are the most important tool that they have. Mm -hmm. And they really know sunglasses better than anybody. We, we let them try out all the lenses. Every one of them is like, I want the pink. Let me have the pink. I've never seen anything like pink. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, I think pretty soon you're going to see all the guides wearing pink lenses and uh, <laughs> which is mm. pretty funny actually, but yeah. um, that's interesting. But, yeah. Um, so uh, how does, how did these glasses or how does the pink lens uh, work in like a slightly stained water? I mean, do they excel in clear water or does it also work in dirty water as well? It works in both. You know, um, yeah, it, it works in both. We fish tannic water and, you know, obviously crystal clear water. Mm -hmm. And uh, in tannic water, you kind of need them more than, than in super clear water. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I think the contrast is, is great for both in both environments. Um, and, you know, we've developed, we've developed several other uh, lens colors. So we've got a blue, we've got a green, we've got a silver, we got a pink. Um, and then we've got a couple other colors that are in test right now, uh, all of which are unexpected colors really for sunglasses. But uh, so, they're, so they're super fun too, you know, just to play around with. Um, right. But, but the other part of it besides the stack and all the, all the layer combinations is, um, I don't know, this wasn't even around 15 or 20 years ago, but it's it's everywhere now. And it's sort of the, the light filter that's in the lens. Mm -hmm. So the light comes through the light spectrum at, you know, it's divided up into nanometers. And so different points on the light spectrum uh, are coded, you know, or, or sort of measured by nanometers and different light comes in at different nanometers. So. Okay. So the blue light is a, the light that comes in the most. You have the more blue light than anything. That comes in most intensely at 445 nanometers. Well, we decided that um, blue light is, there's been a lot of research. I don't know, you know, if you're in front of your pure computer screen or the TV, or if you're a video gamer, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the video gamers were having a hard time sleeping at night. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just because they stayed up till three o'clock in the morning, um, you know, playing video games. But what was happening is that their screens were emitting the blue light mm -hmm. and they're absorbing tons of blue light. And so the blue light stops your eye from producing melatonin and melatonin is mm -hmm. what makes you sleep. Mm -hmm. So they were getting their their sleeping drug in their brain was getting blocked. And so they couldn't go to sleep. 
And so they, so they started coming out and there's also a bunch of other sort of harmful effects that blue light has on you. But um, so they started doing research on it and figured out that that was the problem. So they started creating these blue light uh, glasses. I don't know if you guys have ever seen them, but they're just clear glasses. Like you know, these are mine, blue light mm -hmm. glasses. And they have kind of like a yellow tint to them, mm -hmm. a slightly yellow tint. But what they do is they block the blue light coming into your eye. And it's not the color blue that they're blocking. I mean, you can still see blue, uh, but it's just the waves of the blue light that it, mm -hmm. that it blocks, right? And so these, you know, it worked really well indoors. Well, what we found out was that the sun is actually the largest producer of blue light. And so if you're out on, like we are, we're not on the couch as much as we're out on the water. Mm -hmm. And so all that sun and that blue light that it's emitting is creating eye strain, it's creating some eye disease, and it's keeping you from sleeping at night, um, all those health impacts. And it also, because it, it's, it has haze associated with it, um, it makes things blurry. So, when, so we decided that to attack blue light with our glasses. The other brands were kind of attacking yellow light. Mm -hmm. We decided that blue light was actually what we needed to attack. So we were able to create a technology that blocks blue light at 445 nanometers, blocks 95% of it. That's way more than anybody else is blocking. And so what happens when you put put the lenses on, you say, it's so clear. People are like, oh my God, I can't believe how clear this is. It's like I don't even have a lens in front of my eye. Hmm. And that's because we block the blue light. So that combination of like blocking the blue to create, knock out the haze, create all this clarity and uh, is really cool. And then marry that with the stack we were just talking about that gives you the contrast and allows you to see against the bottom. And that's the, that's the secret sauce. That's how you do it. And that's, that's how we've done it. And, <laughs> and so the lenses are, I mean, they're blowing people away, which is really cool. Yeah. It's, That's it's awesome. funny you mentioned that because my wife, she has glasses for uh, watching TV before she goes to bed and it, it blocks out the blue light. So yeah. she, so, so she's able to sleep. I can now go to her and tell her this information and make her seem like, <laughs> make her think that I'm smart. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Um, I yeah. mean, when we do these pods, I, um, I have the filter that I can switch my screen to that switches the blue light off is actually not, it washes. It will wash out like my face real bad. If I switch it back on, everything will get like extraordinarily bright as well. Yeah. It's weird, but um, that's awesome, man. I've always been kind of a, you know, and it was at the past few years where they really started to do that research into the effects of blue light. And that's why they tell you, try not to look at any screens or doing screen time before you go to bed because it does mess with your sleep cycle for sure. Uh, but I do like the fact that you guys, you know, figured out that, hey, we can block this light and it clear it clears everything up. I wasn't aware of that aspect of the fuzziness that it creates. Um, and it, you can see kind of that because it, like you said, it's, it's the it's the biggest amount that's coming through and it comes through like in radio waves. Right. And if that's where, if I remember the, how like the light spectrum comes through um, like a lens and it's, it's insane. The amount versus like the rest of them, isn't a blue light, like significantly more as well. Yeah. It's significantly more. And it's kind of like, I don't know. Uh, but back in the day, you know, when, uh, we had black lights sometimes, like when I was a kid, it was really cool if you had a black light light bulb mm -hmm. and you put it in your room and then you had these posters that would like show up through the black light. Yep. And, uh, and you know, you, you know, you smoke some weed and turn on the black light and trip out on some. I, I had Pink together. Floyd and Led Zeppelin once. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Pink Floyd, a Pink Floyd poster in the background. I mean, yeah, Pink Floyd is like, whoa, man. So, <laughs> And uh, that's but, awesome. But that light, if you looked at that light bulb, it, you know, it's just kind of has all this haze around it. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's basically how blue light is. It just has all this haze around it. Yeah. So, but yeah, so we, we started getting educated on that back in the day, but uh, <laughs> it holds true for sure. So can you kind of give us a walkthrough of 
how the different colors and what is the best fishing application for like your color schemes. Um, and if you don't have to be super specific if you don't want to, but if you can say like, Oh, like the green, um, like the green mirror finish or whatever, you know, whatever works best for you. But that's one thing I've always been kind of questioning and Mm -hmm. I've always kind of got some different answers like, you know, copper versus gray versus blue versus green. And now we've got pink in the mix. So it's like, mm -hmm. uh, like where does, cause I, the one thing I've always wanted to avoid is having too many pairs of sunglasses. Currently I have mm -hmm. three, I have a pair of blue blockers that are in the, uh, in the truck and I very rarely wear them. Um, I think I have a bronze pair that's in my glove box, which I hardly ever wear. And I was finding myself wearing my Oakley's, which wore green or gray polarized. Um, mm -hmm. I liked those because they were working in either clear water situations and or stained water situations. And I've yeah. had friends that had issues with, depending on what color they were wearing, that they weren't being able to, to see like in stained water or maybe they were struggling in clear water where somebody else wearing a different color. Or is it not even about the color? Is it the bases? Because you mentioned that like most sunglasses I've always kept finding had a gray base like you mentioned before. Mm -hmm. So could you clarify like, you know, what kind of water scenarios are we looking at versus lens colors? Yeah, for sure. Um, it's always been a little bit confusing and there's, you know, debate a little bit by people. So what we wanted to do is try to make it kind of simple and more organized. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple of different things, you know, everything's got polarization in it. And so you got to have polarization that knocks down the glare. Mm -hmm. And so all the lenses have are polarized and there's different levels of polarization, but that's kind of a detail. Um, and then everything for us is reducing blue light. And so that's across all the lenses. So that's, those are the two basic things. Then the next thing is certain, certain lenses are really dark and certain lenses are really light. And that's the amount of light that gets let in. It's called the, the VLT, uh, light transmission value. And <clears throat> so, if you're in a bright light situation, then you want something that's pretty dark lots of times. And if you're in a low light situation where it's cloudy or you're under tree cover or something like that, uh, you want a, a lens that lets in more light, right? So you can see better. So a lot of companies are sort of bunched up in the 11 or 12% light transmission level, really dark. And if you get below 10, it, they're sort of illegal because you can't see traffic lights and it's not safe to drive in those. Uh, but a lot of brands are around that, you know, 10, 11 percent range. Now, if you're out in the middle of the ocean on a super bright day, then that's good. But if you start getting cloud cover, like I've taken some, you know, 11 percent glasses up to Alaska where it's just rains all the freaking time and it's super dark. I'm like, man, I can't see anything. I can't wear these. Right. And as you get older, you know, you need more light coming in to be able to see as well. So, um, you know, there are, there have been brands out there that have, you know, the blue and the green are super dark 11%. And then they'll have like a yellow that's super light around 22 or 23%, but nothing really in the middle. So, what we wanted to do was do a, a step, right? Dark to light. So blue is for us, <clears throat> blue is the darkest, green is next, silver in the middle, pink, and then we're coming out with a new lens that's gonna be even lighter than mm. pink. So, so you know that everything's polarized, everything blocks blue light, so you're gonna get the clarity and all of that. Then you say, okay, do I want a super dark lens or do I want a super light lens? Then the last thing is, you know, what type of fishing, what type of conditions are these for? And so typically the, the gray base is better for offshore type applications. So you see a lot of the, the big boat offshore marlin fishermen, sail fisher, those kind of guys using gray. Gray lets you see pretty much the same color that's out in the world, it's just darker. 
And mm -hmm. so if you're looking out over the ocean and you're looking for a sailfish bill or, or a fin or something like that, that gray is probably pretty good because it lets you see that, that contrast of the fin sticking out of the water against the sky or against the water. And so typically offshore guys prefer that. When you get into a brown or a copper or a red, um, those tend to be more sight fishing applications where you're looking for a fish, you know, 20, 30, 40 feet from the boat down in the water. And so what you have, what you need is something that's going to provide contrast between the water and the bottom so that you can then see the fish against the bottom. Uh, so you would say that of the brown family, the brown would have the least amount of contrast and the red would have the most amount of contrast is how we would look at it. And copper would be in the middle. Um, if you're out on the flats and it's super, super sunny and it's really bright uh, and the water's really clear, you know, you might tend to go for a brown or a copper because they're a little bit more wearable. But if you're in a place where you have murky water or you have low light, uh, you're probably going to want to go for more the red side. Copper works well, but more for the red because that's going to actually give you a lot higher contrast. That, that lens, if you're out in really bright sun and clear water, it's going to be pretty intense. Um, and it might be a little bit too intense for you. Uh, but if you know if you need something in murky water, really technical, then you go for something like the pink or you know the purple is the next one we're coming out with. Um, so that's kind of that's kind of that that last piece, the gray to the red, and it goes from low contrast to high contrast, and you just kind of have to try them on and see see which ones work for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A quick question then. So is mirrored finish just for looks or is that just is it have an application to what you're you know for your sunglasses you know how it'll be like because i had a pair of gray polarized but they were non-mirrored is mirrored just the look you know to give that mirrored effect on the outside or is there actual use to that well i mean it's it's both so a mirror when you put a mirror on a base it's gonna re, it's gonna make it darker so it's going to reduce your light transmission by about two points. So okay. if it was a 14 base and you put a mirror on it, it's probably going to knock it down to a 12 light transmission. So less light's going to come through. But the color, well, we found the color does matter. And that stack that we were talking about where you have the color of the base, the color of the polarized film, the color of the coatings, and the color of the mirror different mirrors on top of the same, if everything else stays the same and you put different mirrors on there, mm -hmm. we find that things look different. Um, so it does have an impact on color, on contrast, and it definitely has a kind uh, you know, it has, has an impact on how dark it is. That's interesting. super interesting. Cause I was almost convinced that the mirrored effect on the, you know, the mirrored coating was just for looks and it's cool to learn about it. I've always been super yeah. interested because it's neat knowing that, you know, you've got three layers to a pair of sunglasses and you change one and it can change the whole, you know, it can change the way those, how you're viewing it. And, you know, maybe it's not minute, but you know, it's not some significant change, but that change is there. Um, but are you guys with you being four months old, how has it been trying to develop like the actual frames, like, you know, like different frame styles? Are you guys kind of following the general, like, I don't want to say the same type of frames, but the same kind of design concepts, just putting your own twist on it. How's that been so far? Well, it was really interesting during COVID as you know, our supply chain, we, we make everything here in New Smyrna Beach, Florida in our lab but we have to get parts you know mm -hmm. all all over and we get sort of complete frames but we get separate lenses and we cut the lenses and all that um so that was sort of a whole nother issue with uh trying to get things designed and built during covid with factories closing down and um, all of that but but um you know when when you start out you you're limited 
uh, in the number of frames that you can have. So we knew that, um, you know, because the factories will have minimum order quantities. So mm -hmm. if we had 50, if we came out with 50 frames, then that would mean that we would have to buy, you know, thousands and thousands of pairs, put them in inventory, that sort of sucks up your cash and, and so forth. So you're limited to, you know, we came out with a dozen uh, right out of the gate. And that was, that was enough for us to kind of cover all the sizes, to cover men and women, to cover the different styles. And so that was a good, a good number. We'll probably double that in the next year or so um, as, as we come out. We wanted to keep our frame selection and, and we want to keep it going forward, you know, smaller than some of the other brands. You know, some of the brands have 130 styles, they have 80 styles. And the retailers are like, please don't come out with that many styles, man. Just yeah. keep it simple, uh, okay? <laughs> so we're all about keeping it simple, stupid, and and really being thoughtful about the designs, making sure we have enough for everybody, mm -hmm. uh, but not just making it so hard to even pick something. Yeah, I can't. Yeah. I mean, I got I got on Oakley's website the other day, and I'm like, <laughs> This is a hot mess, man. Like literally <laughs> trying to scroll through it. And I'm like, it's the gas can. It's a gas can elite. It's a gas <laughs> can like junior. Like, oh my God, dude, there's like, and the way it breaks down, I'm like, this is the most ob obnoxious shopping experience of my life. And I was like, nope. I was, cause I was going to buy a whole new pair of sunglasses. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to replace the lenses. The frames are still intact. Um, I cleaned them up with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. They look good. And let me just replace the lenses. And because I, I couldn't stand it, I couldn't stand. And then my other thing is I have a very misshaped head. <laughs> like I, I have like a narrow face and it's like longer. So sunglasses don't fit me right here. And so many brands are built, especially men's sunglasses. And they're very, very wide sitting on my face. So I used to have to have all my sunglasses. I would take them to my actual eye doctor and they would heat up the plastic and be able to mold it a little bit to fit mm -hmm. my temples better. Yeah. And I can't buy sunglasses online because of that reason. Like I, I've struggled over and over and over again. I have bought them and then got them. I put them on my face. I'm like, these things look like they're made for a giant when they're put on my head. They might fit Brad's face well, but on me, they look obnoxious. They stick out too far. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm commending you wholeheartedly on the fact that you guys aren't going to flood, you know, your brand with 10,000 different frame yeah. styles. Cause it is very obnoxious after a while, you know, I mean, I kind of get it. You're going to keep wanting to develop, you know, different types of, you know, frames or whatever, but what's obnoxious about it is that, you know, like five of those frame designs almost all look identical, you know, to the mm -hmm. point you're like, you know, maybe there's just a little bit of a different edge of plastic. It's different. You know, I mean, I have the the, the five squared and the gas can looks sim similar, just mine are smaller. And then there's another one that looks similar. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I, I get overwhelmed. Conscious. Yeah, it's it's super yeah. overwhelming. So, yeah, man, I, I really do applaud you guys on that because it is it's definitely a frustrating thing in the market. So, um. Definitely yeah. keep it simple. When yeah, you see, don't when you see creeping up to that 60 mark, you know, 50 or 60 <laughs> mark, just be like, maybe we should stop here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think we'll stop way before that. And, uh, <laughs> you know, if something's not working, you trade it out for something new. But um, I don't think you need more than 25 styles, in, yeah, ever. And uh, and focus on the lenses, you know, that's really what you see through the frames are really lens holders is what right. they are. Yeah. It's not, if you're a fisherman, you know, and uh, so, so yeah, we're, we're trying to make it simple for everybody. Also trying to make it environmentally friendly. So all of our frames, except for the metals, obviously we have two metal frames, but uh, all the plastic frames are made from plants. So we have, hmm. you know, there's 65% plant-based material and it's, uh, uh, it's, bio-based so it's a lot easier on the environment it's not perfect mm -hmm. uh, we're continuing to work on new materials that will be even better for the environment but it's also half about half as much weight and 10 times stronger 
which is crazy. So, mm. so they're good for the environment, but they perform a lot better as well. And people, uh, you know, even with our glass lenses, which tend to be a little bit heavier, they, they, they feel super light and, uh, and they're, they're amazed at how light they feel. Mm -hmm. Light. It's like in, in cycling though, lightweight is a sign of technological sophistication, not a sign of being cheap. Right. And so you have to educate people on that, that yeah, it's light for a reason. Oh yeah. <laughs> Took a lot of work to make it light, but yeah. um, but uh, that's I think that's something we're pretty proud of, and that for throughout the whole company, it's all about sustainability and building our products, shipping our products, uh, you know, in a way that really does as least harm in the environment as possible. Because I mean, heck, if you're out there on the water every day, you see the impact. You know that things aren't like they used to be. Right. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so. Yeah, so that just helps a, a little bit. Yeah, it's it's um, it's unfortunate. Though I mean, there's there's improvements that you see out on the water, and then there is kind of things that are just really disappointing. And I think plastic is one of my number one things now that I see. That's just super sad. Um, you know, whether it's coming from trash or construction stuff, you name it, we see mm. it. Especially because Brad and I are river guys. Yeah. We live in um, an area, we both live in the suburbs outside of an urban area. And one of our favorite uh, rivers to fish is the main one that runs through Dayton, Ohio, which is a small urban area. It's not very big, but it's big enough that we get to see the garbage that floats down that river when it rains <laughs> yeah. hard enough. And But the one improvement that I see is that we don't see the amount of chemicals that they used to do back in the mm -hmm. day when the, the industrial, you know, age was really booming when, you know, the automakers were exploding and Dayton had a lot of industrial sh stuff, you know, I mean, it's sad. It's sad to see business fail, but at the same time, a lot of times you see your waterways increase. And a lot mm -hmm. of guys that have been around, you know, for a long time have talked about how good and clean the waterways are getting minus the garbage, you know? Yep. Um, but I have, I'm really ecstatic to hear about the uh, frames because I, I'm a, I mean, we all have plastic stuff. It's unfortunate that it's, you know, there's so much things that are kind of included in our lives that are plastic. I mean, I talked to my friend at work the other day and he's like, I wish they would outlaw plastic bottles. And he's mm. like, just for the sheer fact of the amount that my kids waste. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> he's like, I'm so tired of picking them up, but I mean, it's 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 companies like yours that are taking those steps to move in that direction and be like, hey, let's let's make a new material here. Let's do something different. And so we don't have to be plastic dependent because, I mean, they're still saying there's from when they first made plastic, it's still around. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. it's not de and it doesn't decompose like people yep. thought it does. It's turned into tiny little pieces that our fish are consuming in the oceans. And, you know, we're going from worrying about heavy metals, you know, like mercury to now we're eating plastic, you know, in our in our food. So, yeah, I think 85 percent of the fish in the ocean and in the rivers test positive for plastic. So yeah. hmm. we're, we're eating plastic fish now, which is pretty gross. Uh, <laughs> yeah. no. But, and I mean, well, you think, can we even, are we even digesting that? What is it doing to us? You know, especially the old plastics that had so many cancer causing, you know, substances mm -hmm. in it. So, yeah. And, you know, you don't want to get all like doom and gloom about this stuff. I think there is a ton of positive things going on. I see, yeah. you know, when we were in Charleston, they banned, uh, you know, single use plastic bottles and bags mm -hmm. in the grocery store and straws. Yep. And so they they, they put a plastic they put a paper straw in your drink in a restaurant. Yep. I'm like, well, this isn't bad. I mean, I kind of like it better than plastic straw, you know? Yeah, they don't break as easy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and you know, you drink it fast enough, it doesn't get all soggy. So yeah, uh, I, there's stuff there's stuff that we can all do and to just do a little bit better, you know. But you know, our, like our t-shirts, you know, we we sell we're starting to sell a lot of t-shirts and they come in a plastic bag or our manufacturer wanted them to come in a plastic bag. 
And we're like, nah, we found this paper bag that we can put the t-shirts in. And he's like, well, my machines that I have that cost me millions of dollars don't use, won't use a paper bag for a t-shirt. So we can't do that. You can use a biodegradable plastic bag. How about that? And we're like, yeah, it's going to biodegrade in a thousand years instead of 2000 years. Big whoop. It's, yeah. It doesn't really help. So we bought these paper bags and we said, just send us the shirts, not in a bag. And so we here in our office sit there all day and put, you know, t-shirts and paper bags <laughs> ourselves because we're just like, we're not doing the plastic thing. And um, so it takes a little bit more work, but it's, uh, it makes everybody feel good, you know, mm -hmm. and I think it makes your employees more loyal and, and everybody feels like they're doing something good, you know, yes. so that's, that's a positive. I can respect that. Yeah, I definitely respect <laughs> cool. it. I had an argument with my mom. <laughs> about the paper versus plastic. Oh, I hate these straws. And I'm like, oh, not that bad. Still drinks the same. Still tastes like Coca-Cola. Yeah. yeah, don't bother me. It's whatever. But uh, yeah, yeah I mean, uh, um, go we, ahead, Brad. We forgot to talk about glass lens versus plastic lens. So I kind of wanted to hit that real quick before we ended it. Um, I have some plastic lenses. I know people that have glass lenses and they swear by them. What's the differences and why would you choose one over the other? Well, it's, it's a good question. And you know, the, so the main reason that I would want to have glass lenses is because they're more scratch resistant and we have super sophisticated, like space age coatings that we put on plastic lenses to make them not scratch, but they still scratch mm -hmm. a lot more than glass lenses do. And that is the number one thing. Now, there, there are folks out there who will say that, well, a glass lens is more clear. So they measure clarity by an ab, something called an ABBE value, A-B-B-E. And so, if the, you know, the thing is that glass has a higher ABBE value, so it's a lot more clear than a plastic. But honestly, the human eye cannot tell the difference. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a myth that glass lenses are more clear they're really not. It's the hardness. They're definitely the hardest. Mm -hmm. And so they scratch the least. Uh, they are going to be a little bit heavier than a plastic lens. So if you want lightweight and you want, um, you know, the other thing is that a plastic lens is softer. So mm -hmm. it being soft makes it scratch more easily, but it also makes it more impact resistant. Mm hmm. So if you were to get, you know, somebody shot a bullet into your eye, uh, it's probably less likely to penetrate if it's a plastic lens they shot it into than a glass lens. Hmm. Glass lenses will tend to shatter because they're more brittle, they're harder. But the thing is a glass lens too, it has all the films, the layers that we talked about with mm -hmm. polarized. So it's going to be more like your windshield. It's going to, it'll hang together. It might it might shatter, but it'll hang together. It won't go in your eye. Okay. Uh, so, so the safety factor is not as, you know, as big as people make it out to be. So I, I think right. scratch resistant is the biggest thing. The other thing uh, just, you know, quickly is that glass lenses, man, if you ever, if you ever see like the manufacturing process for glass, it is like, old school freaking you know blacksmith kind of kind of stuff hmm. you you put out you put the sand you know glass is made out of sand mm -hmm. silicone and then you put all these other chemicals in there all the stuff that's going to make the glass do what you want it to do in this big old vat and it's like fires going it's like molten glass dudes have lead boots and these lead vests on and they're like you know like Wizard of Oz, oh, you know, pouring this stuff in there. You got <laughs> tattoos on it, you know, big old dude. And all that stuff going on. Uh, but what that, that means is that it's a lot harder to innovate and to do new things with glass mm -hmm. than it is with plastic. So I'll talk to our plastic lens manufacturer and I'll say, look, here's, here's what I want the stack to look like. Here's what I want the, you know, transmission values to be, give them the whole formula they put it into their little computer 
and they can simulate it on their computer. They spit out the spectral charts for me. I take a look at them I'm like, yeah, that's it. They spit out a couple of samples. We take them out in the water. We test them. You can't do all that stuff with glass. You know, glass is the molten stuff and it's, it's old school, you know, and it's very manual process, not, not mechanized, not really digital. Um, so it's a lot easier to experiment and innovate with plastic. So I do all the innovating and experimenting with plastic. And then I tell my glass guys match this, you know, and, mm -hmm. but it's a lot harder for them to do that. Uh, mm -hmm. But for the consumer glass is scratch resistant. Uh, you know, plastic is more, more impact resistant. Yeah. Awesome. Good to know. I'll take, I'll take impact resistant all day. <laughs> I did fall off. My sunglasses fall off the top of my hat yeah. on a regular basis. So, yeah. I, Josh, I was picturing uh, a jig getting stuck and you ripping that jig and just coming and smashing <laughs> you in the face with it. Here comes your tell little top water walking bait. Like, yeah. Squaw. Like, <laughs> I've not got hit by, oh, yeah. Yeah, I got hit right in the crotch earlier this year. That's right. I forgot about that. It made the loudest swamp like smack noise hit me right in the crotch right in the springtime i hollered like it's i don't know it's hilarious so i'm like somebody yeah, got hit with a paddle funny. yeah but yeah I've, I've got the uh i've got the thing uh, the app on my phone that shows you how to get a, a hook that's embedded <laughs> in your skin out you know <laughs> yeah a lot of uh, practice at that man yep we I see what that. brad like at least four videos a year from the kayak fishing community on it yeah like, hey, the one that pops out is good at it <laughs> yeah the one that pops out is adam riser getting smashed in the teeth you oh know? yeah oh man that was nasty yeah, yeah it's um i don't know i started carrying like like uh like a big like they're like bolt cutters but a mini version of them um mm -hmm. i started carrying those just because of the fear of doing it um because i i I mean, I used to have piercings and stuff. I got tattoos done. So like pushing the, the hook through further mm -hmm. is not going to really bother me unless it's against bone. Yeah. But I definitely could push a barb through and then cut it that way instead of <laughs> – I always get afraid of somebody slipping, you know, trying to do the old braid trick. And I'm like, oh, do I trust this guy? <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, Oh, like, man. Yeah. But awesome. Um, Brad, did you have any other questions? No, we, man, we hit it, man. Everything I had, we we hit it pretty good. So, Al, was there anything you wanted to add on to our conversation, buddy? Nah, this was fun, man. It uh, the hour flew by, and uh, you know, I hope we didn't get too too geeky on sunglass technology and stuff with you guys. But uh, <laughs> I always love talking about it. Um, sunglasses are just such an important tool for you out there in the water, so it's worth investing and and then taking care of them like you do and mm -hmm. and uh it, it makes fishing a lot more successful and you know can't see the fish you can't catch them lots of times so uh anyway thanks for having me on guys it's been super fun and uh hope we run and run to each other on the water sometime yeah for sure man i appreciate you coming on and don't worry about the geekiness that's what we're here for brian and i are super geeks especially yeah. when it comes to kayak fishing <laughs> And this yeah. was an episode. Him and I, he, Brad, you just got a pair of new sunglasses this season. Yeah, I replaced the lenses of mine. Um, I've been I'm still kind of shopping around. Um, and when Brian had told me about your brand and that you guys were new, and your background and your history a little bit, I was like, I got to check these out because, um, like I tell said before, man, the just the options out there, it's overwhelming. It's too much. I got kind of disappointed about Exotica owning, you know, Costa. And then it's like, oh, like, because I had a friend, she works for them. And I was like, oh, my God, I had no idea that they owned that many brands. I knew they owned like eight or nine, mm -hmm. not the amount that they have. And, you know, it's cool to see that you guys started up your own thing, man, and that you're doing environmentally friendly. You've got the know-how, you know, you already have the know-it-all like to, to keep in innovating these lens colors and to find stuff that works. This pink lens thing, I'm super excited um, for you guys and, you know, keep shooting for the stars, man. I, I wish you guys all the best of luck with everything. 
Thanks, man. Really appreciate it. And uh, it's great meeting you guys. And I hope we see you again soon, man. And if uh, you need some shades, shoot me a note. Happy to hook you up. All right. Everybody check out their website, bahiosunglasses.com. Is that correct? That's right. And uh, yeah, get some shades. Let's uh, let's uh, try to do our part and making them run out of stock. <laughs> 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 but uh, thanks again. And everybody, thank you for listening to the final cast this week. And we'll see you next time. See ya. Thanks for tuning in to another killer episode on Paddle and Finn. Don't forget to go check out our website at Paddle, the letter N, and Finn.com. Don't forget to check out the YouTube channel at Paddle and Finn. If you got a question, comment, want to hear from a future guest on a future episode, feel free to email us at Paddle, the letter N, and Finn at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Paddle and Finn on Facebook and Instagram. Shout out to our show supporters, Angler, the Angler Button and app just makes for a better time on the water and creates a virtual logbook for every fishing outing out on the water. Shout out to Rocktown Adventures located in Northern Illinois for all your kayaking, camping, and hiking needs. Shout out to Jigmasters Jigs. When in doubt, get the jig out. Go to jigmasters.com 